My name is Tomas Treseno. I'm an artist. I came to MIT in 2012, invited by Cast. And I, I met many, many people in their laboratories, in their fields of research. Tomas Saraceno is the mold for a cast artist, and part of that is because he was the first. We felt like he would be able to have interesting and possibly fruitful conversations with quite a number of people, which he did. I'll go inside the spider thread and I'll share with you what is inside this little thread. In one of the visits, I met uh, Marcus Bühler, and this was immediate, the connection that we have through the love that he have and I have also to spider webs. <laughs> and from there, we, we start to, to speak about different scales and entanglement from terrestrial webs to cosmic webs. He got really fascinated about the method that we have developed through the years about the possibility to digitalize spider webs. And we really optimize and to reach to a completely new level into the understanding of these amazing webs. And when it's digitalized, it was able then later to be projected in a space that then an instrument was able to interact at the scale of the spider this process could continue with the idea of being able to think about spiderweb as a musical instrument. When Tomas first came, he talked about his idea of making a spiderweb instrument. And years later, I went to visit him in Berlin, and he said, oh, the spiders are so active today, they're making so much noise. Get your instrument out. <laughs> Suddenly, we were recording improvisations between me and the spider. With Evan, it was beautiful because this sensitivity of the vibration is something which is at the core, right? Nobody else could have done it. This moment was very, very memorable for me. You will see slowly, do you see already now, yeah. that the die is moving at the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other big department was IPS, Earth Planetary Atmospheric Science, and then I met Ludovica Ilarin. And we were both fascinated about uh, atmospherics. The Aerocene project emerged as the engagement of people with the atmosphere. Thomas learned about these balloons that could fly night and day using radiation from the sun during the day and infrared radiation from the earth at night. Him coming to MIT and working with atmospheric scientists was like, here I have the skills to build these structures, now where would they go? Imagining how we could travel through the atmosphere with the circulation patterns in a world post-jet fuel, or we run out of our fossil fuels, can we still get around the globe? We tested them at MIT and Killian Court. They're quite a, a draw for people. When you're used to seeing a balloon, you maybe see it, you know, just kind of float right off into the air with a helium balloon. But these balloons, they're more sensitive to the environmental conditions. We worked with Tomas on testing these Aerocene Explorer backpacks that have a balloon, a sensor pack, sort of these toolkits for communities to be able to sample the air in their surroundings. We made a flight booking tool so you can try to set your starting location and your goal destination and then see where you fly. Not only for human and man-made balloon, but also you can predict of how spiders or how particles move through the atmosphere. At COP21, we went out to an airfield outside of Paris. We had to go really early in the morning. As the sun comes up, these balloons do all start to like kind of lift off and there's like a field of these different sculptures around. It's maybe something that's a sense of like where the art and science intersect, that there's these moments in time where like things that are, do appear to be almost magical can start to occur.
Tomas is a great networker, or the like web spinning in a way of connecting people that are passionate about a lot of different things, both the spider works and into the like atmospheric works. In his head, they aren't really separate projects. It's all connected together. I'm so much in favor of, of, of this collaboration that have happened across disciplines, no? Because today we are a huge confrontation between traditional ecological form of knowledge, scientific knowledge, artistic knowledge, and how we can weave that connection.